So I thought we should be together. Are there any, are there any questions about these two worlds? Uh, yes. When you come to the idea? Yeah. Well, I tell you, I was 45. 45 years old. And to the point, I said, okay. I was 45 years old, and here's what happened. My second marriage broke down. <coughs> so one marriage is okay. Two is not good. In the, in the <laughs> In, 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 uh, in the importance of being earnest, there's a wonderful play by Oscar Wilde. Right? Yeah. No. In, are you in the importance of being earnest. And in there, there's a lady who says, to lose one parent is unfortunate. Yeah. To lose two looks like carelessness. <laughs> so it's with, with marriages too. Yeah. To lose one marriage is unfortunate. <laughs> to lose two is careless. Beautiful. <laughs> okay. So when I lost my second marriage, I got to rethink everything. From the ground up, and that's when this began. And I realized there were really two separate worlds. And when uh, I separated from my wife, who is now 30 years ago, she said, We will be related for the rest of our life. She said, when you are related to somebody, you will be related to that person for the rest of your life. So, she said, we should make the best form of that relationship. So, the first thing she did, this is Ross, you know Ross because she's the author of the book. This is Ros. She's my second wife. The first thing she did when we separated was I. She came to look for a house for me. For the first time, when we separated, she came to look for a house for me. For the first time, when we found an apartment. And then she said, "The red sofa would look beautiful over there." And then she said, "Oh, the red sofa would look beautiful over there." I said, Rose, you've got that sofa from your mother. She said, I don't care where it came from, I want you to be happy. And then it began. That's how it began. And I realized that she only focused on happiness and well-being. And she didn't care where the sofa came from. You know, when, when people break out, they say, that's mine. No, no, mine. And then you get a lawyer. You say, no, that's mine. And before long, they're fighting and they're angry. Cuando las personas se separan siempre están peleando y discutiendo por las cosas y por buscar un abogado también para hacer ese tipo de cosas. She had the discipline, ella tenía la disciplina, of realizing that if if you are in relationship, you are in relationship forever. De que si estás en una relación, estás en una relación. That was the most profound lesson for me. Esa fue la lección más profunda que aprendí. And I began a new life. Y comencé una nueva vida. 
that kind of thing. And so from then on, I've been working with these two worlds. And I know that I have a choice. At every moment. Do, do I choose always this one now? Sometimes I like to be over here. A veces le gusta estar aquí. Jealous, I like to be angry. Me gusta estar celoso, molesto, sea. But I don't care. But I'm not tengo. I have a choice. Tengo una oportunidad. And to know that I have a choice is a huge liberation. Y saber que tengo una oportunidad es una gran liberación. And everybody has that choice. Todo el mundo tiene esa opción. So, if you set out to your question, yeah, yes, yes. Anything else? Anything about, yes? <coughs> a conductor. Yeah. I'll tell you, it's a very good story. She asked, when, why did I become a. Cuando es el comité? So, I was a cello player. And my teacher, Casado, insisted that we teach, always teach, 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 teach. And so I taught cello and also chamber music. music Brahms, trio, sonatas. <laughs> so one day, I get a job teaching cello and chamber music in a school in America. And uh, when the job was decided, the lady gave me the job. We had tea afterwards. And then she said, we're looking for a conductor for the orchestra. Do you know anybody who could do that? Yes, I'd love to do that. She said, are you very experienced? I said, very. Conducting is an open physical representation of what you think about the music. Dirigir es una representación física de todo eso. That's why I knew he could conduct. Por eso yo sabía que podía dirigir. That's what conducting. And so when I said I'm very experienced, actually I was very experienced. Así que cuando dije que tenía mucha experiencia, just I never conducted. <laughs> so is that answer your question? Yes. And also, conducting is a bigger canvas, a, a bigger space. I love that. También, you hear it in the passion, you think that. And the Wala, Brooklyn, Brown, the big, the big thing. What else about this two worlds? Is, yes. We see in your music making that in the rehearsal to apply the art of spirits. That became from the first time in your life that you, you realize that word when you... Uh, well, that was a process. It was uh, in that time, so you have to explain what he said. Okay. Well, you have to explain what he el maestro que al verlo ensayar, uno se da cuenta que realmente él aplica el arte de las posibilidades en su manera de, de hacer música. Y la pregunta es que si eso está desde el principio que él hizo ese cambio en su vida o si fue un proceso que se desarrolló luego. So let me tell you uh, what happened to me. I, I was a successful conductor. Así que déjeme decirle lo que pasó porque yo fui un there was a high cost for my success. That was the well-being and the energy of the people around me. The managers, the staff, the players, the wife. The manager, the musical, the staff, the musical, the stepchildren. 
it because of that. I was out here. Because I was up here and the players were down here. <coughs> and so if things didn't go my way, I got angry with them. <coughs> and people lost their energy. And they lost their good feeling. And then I had a very important discovery. And I talked about it last night. I discovered the players play the music. The conductor is silent. So my power as a conductor comes from my ability to make other people powerful. And what you are experiencing this week is that. Take Ivan, like the oval. I got to know Ivan, Ivan on the first day. I got to know his sound, I got to know his character, and now my job is to make Ivan a great overworker. So I focus on Ivan, not just on Ivan, I'm telling one person. I focus on the sound, on the way. I love him. So, Ivan, do you feel that I love you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, and they love her, everybody. Where is Laura? Is she here? Laura. Yeah. I love Laura too. Did that mean I'm allowed? And I love her sound. And so I get to know her sound. I get to shape her sound. Help her make beautiful music with Ivan. And so my attention, my attention is no longer on me. I think it means you're in My attention is on them. And because of that, they begin to feel important. Careful. Loved. Loved. And that I'm interested in them. And that's a huge transformation. Boom! Right there. And so when I walk into a room of musicians, I see these amazing people. I can't wait to hear from them. So my whole attention is somewhere else now. Now my attention is on you. And it's not just the soloist, it's also in the second stand of the cello. There's a wonderful cello to move. And it takes a and so I get to know the players a little bit by this. Yes, you work on a general music. Lorenzo. Is it no? No. No. Leonardo. Two And so, bit by bit, I get to know every person and every face, and I look for their eyes. And this fellow here, he wasn't too happy today. No, but I'm concerned because he looks unhappy. So in the break today, I said to him, are you having a good time? And he said, yes, with full enthusiasm. <laughs> but if he's not having a good time, that's not good for the audience. Everybody suffers from all the mundos. So I care, I, I notice that he's... I make contact. It's a totally different way of relating to people. Before.